this tutorial we're going to look at how to get a very quick down and dirty region loaded and published in the space virtual world. So uh, to do this you need to have uh, already installed the Unity um, uh, uh, editor on your PC uh, or back and uh, you need to have imported the space editor pack and when you've got that you should have this extra menu item up here. Uh, so uh, what do I need to do? I've got a scene window here and I'm going to chuck something in here so that I, my avatars can have somewhere to stand. So uh, that could be a terrain. Uh, I'm just going to create a plane. So I'm going to come to game object, 3D object and grab a plane. There it is. Okay, I can highlight it in the scene and uh, resize it in the uh, transform tab in the inspector to the uh, to the right here. So first of all, I'm going to place it in the center of the universe. It doesn't have to do that, but it's just a neat, tidy thing to do. Zero, zero, zero. And then it's disappeared from my screen, but if I bring my um, uh, cursor over the scene window and tap F, I get taken to it. Uh, and you can see there are a couple of other assets visible that um, Unity defaults into the scene. Uh, one is this directional light. Everything that I create in this scene appears in this tab here, the hierarchy. Plane, directional light, main camera. Now this main camera I'm actually going to delete because uh, I don't want to have that in there. Um, it's going to interfere with um, uh, the avatar's camera. And uh, so now I've got uh, some ground and incidentally you can see that this ground has a mesh collider on it which means that it has the physical property of being you can't fall through it. Uh, so now if I grab a player character from our project by in the project folder here typing player uh, char actually c-h-a-r you'll see there's an object here and I can just highlight it and drag it out uh, into the scene and there again if I just click because uh, I'm highlighting it here in the hierarchy window if I just click F you can see it's a little blue guy and that's essentially a proxy uh, for your or your guests avatars when they are in world. Um, okay, that allows me to press play in the uh, editor and I can run around just like uh, my, um, my avatar will do in the uh, live virtual world itself. So here you can see uh, I've loaded um, a rather rakish looking uh, avatar here and um, I can move around, I can walk backwards and forwards if I want to. Uh, okay, fine, I then press stop uh, or the play button again in the top bar and I go back to this edit view. Okay, uh, but that isn't um, uh, actually going to allow avatars to teleport into my region uh, when it's uploaded and to do that I need to create what's called a landmark. So in the project, in the uh, hierarchy, in the scene hierarchy here, below the word hierarchy I click on the word create and then I come to create other and there's one option in there which is a landmark. Uh, now this object will uh, default, its position will default to wherever my view is here. Uh, so it's actually exactly where my, my uh, view is. So if I click landmark and then again press F, you can see that it's actually there hovering in the air. And uh, currently if I leave it there, uh, I'm going to end up falling into the ground. Uh, so I can move it uh, by pressing W, I get um, transform keys. So I can drag it over here. I can actually just move it here as well. So I'm going to make it zero, two, zero. Uh, so, and I'll set the rotation to zero as well. And now if I find it, oh, don't want an F in there, uh, F, uh, you can see uh, that it's positioned very close to the character that I dropped in there. And uh, I'm going to now make two changes. So when you uh, highlight any object, in the scene or indeed in the project, uh, you'll see the settings for that object, the components attached to it here in the inspector. So you can see on the player character, I can see the avatar controller. On this light, I can see the settings for the light, how bright it is, what color it is. Uh, and on the landmark here, I've got these settings and I need to change these. I need to make it a spawn point. So I'm ticking spawn point and I may need to make it a landing zone. And now you can see it's become a big yellow panel uh, and uh, I'm actually going to raise it up 
slightly more. If you hold down control when you move objects, they will um, snap to a one meter grid. And uh, by pressing E, I get the uh, rotation fields up. And again, I can snap that around so that it's just facing forward. Um, the big yellow arrow that doesn't go away, regardless of which of the um, uh, such uh, movement and uh, manipulation tools you use tells you which direction the avatars will be facing uh, when they spawn at this point. And I've made it slightly higher than the train just because if it's absolutely touching, or the, the ground, if it's absolutely touching that plane, there's a chance people's feet might spawn below it and then they might drop down below the ter terrain. So here they'll drop gently onto the, onto the ground. Uh, very good. Okay, now what I need to do is add um, a component, uh, one last component to the scene, uh, which allows me to upload it. So I'm going to go Space in the top menu bar, and I'm going to go to Scene Settings. Now, this is basically a form that you fill in that has the product information for the scene. Now, I'm not going to go... Uh, um, through all of it, but because most of it's very, very simple. It is a region, we don't need to change that. This virtual good component at the top you'll see um, also covers clothes and gestures and so on and so forth, but it defaults to region, so I don't need to touch it. This is a simple test region. That's my name for it. Uh, and the description I'm going to make exactly the same. And the brand I'm going to uh, call sign wave. Uh, you'll learn more about brands uh, later on. If you're a creator of virtual goods, you can use the brand to separate items in the uh, uh, in different vending machines. Uh, the developer is uh, the actual person who's the le legal um, legally responsible for the account. Uh, I'll put a sine wave in there as well. Um, I don't need to touch this resume ID. That's if I'm resubmitting uh, uh, at a later date. Now uh, the room type, uh, just to make it discoverable, I'm going to say serene. Uh, it's certainly no more than that. Um, I don't need to touch these settings. Um, these, if you're doing really big scenes, you might uh, dig into these. There's other tutorials about that. These images are what will be found, uh, how, uh, are like um, splash images, promotional images, um, and loading images for when you log in. Uh, but I'm not going to add anything there now because this is just a test. I do need to reserve a URL. So this, because every region um, is published in WebGL in the browser natively in HTML5, uh, every region you can grab your own custom URL for it. And I'm going to call this um, a underscore boring place. I'm going to click reserve. So unfortunately, none of you will be able to own the precious a boring place uh, URL. Sorry about that. Uh, all of these sittings here I'm going to blissfully ignore. They allow me to um, define the uh, compression of objects in the scene for different builds. The desktop build has better performance than mobile, which has better performance than WebGL, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't need to touch any of it. I don't need to touch any of this. Uh, apply compression settings and sort into layers. I don't really need to do for this region either. Uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, make a couple of last changes uh, to make sure uh, that um, this is clearly something that I have uploaded. So I'm going to find a, a random object, a prop of some description in my project here. Um, let's see what we've got. I think I've probably got a car somewhere. Uh, so there we go. Look. I'm just going to drop that car there so that we've got something in the scene other than just um, a blank uh, space. And uh, I'm going to delete the player character because uh, I don't actually want to upload that with the scene. In fact, if you leave it in there, you won't be able to submit. When you get to the bottom of this form here and you've filled out the minimum, uh, incidentally, uh, what I have filled out here is basically the minimum. Things like the developer name, the copyright name. You'll see some little warnings in here if you haven't got the bare minimum filled in. So a lot of this stuff you can see when you're really creating a product, you'll want to have these loading, these images and so on and so forth. And you, you might want to get into the compression settings as well. But for the moment, um, I filled in the bare minimum. 
if you come down to here and you're trying to press the automatic submission button and it won't let you, it's probably because there's some uh, notes up here, flags up here saying, oh, you haven't added the developer name or whatever it is. Okay, so now I've done everything I need to do. I'm going to go File, uh, Save Scene. Um, so this is Boring Place and I'll put it in my Regions folder. You can put it anywhere in the, in the project. Save, and I'm going to press automatic submit. Are you ready to submit the region for processing and review? I sure am. Upload region. You must uncheck auto in the lighting bake window and build maps manually. Okay, uh, so it seems that Unity is uh, defaulting to leaving the uh, auto on in light bake, lighting bake, bake window. So you can see that if there are things that you're that you need to do that you haven't done, it will prompt you. Uh, to do that, I'm going to come to Window here in the top menu bar, Window. Uh, I'm going to go to Lighting uh, here, so Window in the top menu and then Lighting. You can see it brings up a separate panel with a whole load of settings that provide an inordinate amount of exciting opportunities in terms of lighting your, uh, uh, lighting your scene with very, very professional tools. Right now, all I want to do is untick uh, this auto button here, which is um, setting baking light maps. Uh, close that window again. I'll save the scene again. File, save. Click the button to submit in the bottom of the uh, um, scene export settings panel. Are you ready to submit? I am. Are you? Yay! So this time it processes the content, and because this is all of a two meg scene, even with the uh, 70s muscle car in it. It's ripping through fairly quickly. Of course, you can upload scenes that are 200 meg, 2 gigabytes if you want. There are no limits to region uh, sizes in terms of geography, even for the free uh, package. You can, we've tested 16 kilometers by 16 kilometers with no trouble at all. Um, uh, so obviously those ones will take a little bit longer to, to chug through uh, when you're submitting them. But now what I'm waiting for is three emails that are going to come through to my um, account associated with the, with the project. Uh, one telling me that they've received the file, our servers have received the file, one telling me that they're starting to be processed and the other telling me that it's finished processed. And when it's finished processing, then I can go on to our creator server, the preview server, and I can review it and if I'm happy with it, I can then push it to the live servers. So now I'm jumping across to my email and I can see I've got an upload queued email, a started processing email, and an email confirming uh, that a simple test region uh, has finished processing. So uh, that means I can come back here. Uh, I can just grab the URL and log straight in. I've also got a button uh, in the um, uh, uh, scene export settings tab here where if I scroll down just below the URL, I can actually just click Creator. There's no point in clicking Live yet because I haven't pushed it to the live servers. I've only got it on the uh, Creator servers. Uh, but I click Creator and it launches a tab uh, in, um, I think this is uh, uh, Chrome. And uh, this is where the splash page uh, that comes, the image that comes from here, a 1024 by 512 image we recommend. That's where that would appear here, where the, where the uh, player file is loading and then when the region itself loads. So at the moment it's just white because I haven't added anything there. Um, similarly here, you'd see that image here. So it can be a sort of a call to action or a promotion or just a beautiful view of the scene people are going to drop into. Um, and there I am, as we said before, just floating slightly above the ground. I drop to the ground. Uh, there's my uh, 70s muscle car. And uh, really, that's about all I can do in this region. I happen to have some dances, so I'm going to do a little dance while I'm in here. But that is how you um, create and submit a basic region. OK, that's everything you need to know about the very basics of how to create a region in the space virtual world and upload it. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you will be able to do more interesting things than a small flat plane with an inert car model on it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, check out the other tutorials for uh, details on how to do more uh, complicated things.